All right, uh, this is a video I've been wanting to make for a while now, um, just uh, to help get some insight, I guess, in um, understanding the relationship between the um, the IPO on the uh, the ACU FTDX10 and the signal that comes out of the rig. Um, and in this case, we're looking at it through WSJTX um, because that gives me both, well, it gives me a couple of advantages. So one, FT8 is, you know, always pretty busy, right? So here we can see we're looking at 20 meters. There's plenty of activity. Um, I can quantify reception by looking at the number of decodes I get per cycle. So we can see that here. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but this little number, that's uh, the way I've got the windows arranged. So you can see the number of decodes right now. I'm getting <clears throat> between uh, upper upper 20s, lower 30s per cycle. And then um, also we qualitatively, we can view the waterfall in WSJTX. And I've got it set almost entirely at defaults. So... Um, the, the main adjustments that I've made here, let me see if I can find a pointer. Um, the binning, I've got it set for um, three bins per pixel. The averaging is one, starting at 100 hertz, so it's spanning 100 hertz to just a little bit over three kilohertz. Um, but otherwise, the, the color palette and these different adjusting sliders, I have not touched. Um, so this is a pretty standard stock configuration. Um, and on the radio, um, I've got it zoomed in quite a bit. I've got the span set to five kilohertz and then I've got the waterfall offset a little bit so that we can see the full three kilohertz that is FT8, um, on the screen there at once. And what I'm really interested in trying to understand is the relationship of the IPO, which um, Yesu calls intercept point optimization, um, which is, I'm, my understanding is that it's basically a preamp. It's got three settings. Um, there's IPO, which is like the base setting where there is no preamplification. Amp one, where there is one um, RF amp for approximately 10 dB gain as per the manual and amp two, which is approximately 20 dB gain. And um, there's also an attenuator, though I have that turned off, um, but I have the IPO set to amp two for 20 dB gain. Um, and that's what it has been for all of the cycles that have been on the screen so far. So what I'm curious about is why when I go in here and I drop the IPO or you know the setting down to IPO, you can see on the waterfall, it drops pretty, pretty significantly, right? They're only the strongest signals are still visible. But in the waterfall here, it's still, the signals are still coming in pretty strong. Um, you know, I'm expecting a, a 20 dB loss in signal strength. And yet for that decode, we got 27. Um, for that decode that just completed, we got 37. It actually went up. Um, let's let it run a couple of more here. For that decode, we got 32. And then there we got 37 again, right? So if I go and I change my IPO setting, pull it up to amp one, we can see now a few more signals on the rigs waterfall are boosted now but the waterfall in WSJTX doesn't look significantly different. Um, to me, it's, it, it looks about the same, right? Um, you know, so here, I'll let it run a couple more cycles at amp one. I'll just let it finish this one and then I'll bump it back up to amp two. So when I kick it up to amp two, 
you know, the waterfall fills out significantly, the stronger or the weaker signals are much more easily visible. But on the waterfall in WSGATX, it doesn't look significantly different. That said, if I adjust the attenuator, um, that definitely makes a difference on both waterfalls, right? So for example, here, kind of in the middle, um, in WSJTX, it's this one right around 1200. Um, we've got a really strong signal. And if I go in and, you know, say that was a, a sideband signal that I needed to cut down, you know, if I bump up the attenuator, you could see the waterfall pretty dramat dramatically changes on the radio. And if we wait a cycle in WSJTX, you'll see that the, uh, the signals are a little bit darker. After this cycle completes, I'll kick it down another notch. I know it's kind of difficult to compare cycle to cycle because you're looking at two different sets of signals. So you really need to be comparing every other. So really we should be letting this sit for a full four cycles. So we get two even and then two odd um, on one setting and then two even, two odd on another setting. So I'll let it do one more, set, one more odd cycle and then I'll bump up the attenuator. So now I'll bump it up to 12 dB. Again, on the Riggs waterfall, it drops significantly. We, we're really only seeing those stronger signals. And then in WSJTX, we're seeing like uh, this signal. This was with the 6 dB of attenuation. The signal at um, around 6.30. You know, here it is. Again, it's, you know, it's not as bright. This really strong signal that was splattering at 1200, it's diminished also quite a bit. You know, I don't really need to do this all that much to, to make this point clear. The attenuator is definitely making an impact on the signal that's, you know, in this case, I'm just using the USB port, right? I'm using the single USB port um, that's got the, the COM port as well as the audio stream. Um, <laughs> And the attenuator is definitely making a difference. But what I'm really more interested in is this IPO. And why is it that um, adjusting these settings really seems to make no, no difference in, um, in, the, in the waterfall and the number of decodes in WSJTX? Um, another thing that I'm kind of curious about is the use of the roofing filter, right? So I've got it set to three kilohertz right now, um, which makes sense. Um, for this, you know, every once in a while, there are some signals in FT8 that are a little bit north of uh, three kilohertz up. You know, I've seen some as high as like 3,200. I'm assuming usually that's people using rigs, um, you know, that maybe don't have digital VFOs or they're kind of out of Cal or, you know, whatever. Um, and so every once in a while, I'll, uh, move the, the bandwidth. I'll bump it up a little bit. Either I'll move it to 3,500 or maybe I'll move it to 3,200 and then I'll, um, you know, shift it up a hundred Hertz or so, um, to catch that far edge. Um, but I've always been kind of curious as far as how that works when our roofing filter, you know, is a crystal filter that's taking out three kilohertz. Um, I don't think it's just in the background switching in the 12 kilohertz filter. And um, the reason I, I don't think that is because if I drop it down to the 500 hertz filter, you know, and we can see um, on the Riggs waterfall, that signal is still visible. Um, but on our, the, the little audio filter graph, we can see the way it's set up. And then certainly in WSJTX, we can see we're just getting that center um, 500 Hertz and everything else is pretty much squashed. Um, but I can move where that is. So if I wanted to scoot it down, you know, say 600 Hertz, we can see pretty clearly on the waterfall that's, that's squashed out. Right. And that's the sort of thing that guys use if they're, um, doing like the, the Fox and Hound mode and they're chasing a really faint, 
DX station, um, and there's a local guy that's like boom, and you know you can use this 500 hertz filter and kind of square in on him. Um, but I don't think that. Or, so to, to go back to what I was saying, if I'm in the three kilohertz roofing filter and I change the bandwidth up to um, uh, you know up to 3500. I don't think it's switching up to the 12 kilohertz filter silently um, because if I mimic that here on the 500, it's just a little bit easier to show. Um, let, let it get a one cycle on 500 centered. And then if I come in here and I adjust the bandwidth, you know, we can see the amount of audio, you know, noise that's coming into WSJTX is greater you know there's a signal here at you know 2000 you can see the signal here at you know around 2400 this one way down here at 400 um those signals are still there but the filter is definitely doing a, a pretty good job squashing it out right and if i come back to the rig and i change the roofing filter back up to the three kilohertz um the signal quality across you know across this band increases pretty dramatically because it's able to pull in that full three kilohertz um so i'm assuming that the roofing filter is just audio it doesn't have anything to do with rf um but i, I don't i don't know for sure uh, and the reason i'm making that assumption is because it it's impacting this little guy right here this waterfall or not the waterfall, the, the spectrum graph, not the waterfall. When I made those changes, it didn't adjust this waterfall at all. Um, so yeah, that's not really relevant to the main question. The main question is about the IPO, which is, you know, why is it that um, when I change the IPO setting um, down to turn off any preamps, why doesn't that make any difference in WSJTX? It doesn't really bother me at all. Um, I haven't had any difficulty and the main reason I anymore just leave it at amp two is because um, I like to see more activity on the waterfall of the rig, you know, cause I'm not always watching the WSJTX waterfall. Um, but I was worried initially that if I had the IPO set to amp two, that I would be really blowing out, um, the, uh, you know, the, the, the strong signals would be coming in way too strong if I did that. Um, and that doesn't seem to be the case. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Just interesting. Um, so what I'm going to do now, um, I'm going to let it run a full cycle here, like a full screen section on, um, amp two. And then I'm going to switch it down back down to IPO. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll take screen grabs and overlay them side by side um, to kind of show them what I'm talking about. Um, so yeah, so I'm just going to stop talking. I'll mute the audio. And when this completes, I'll show the screen grabs. <laughs> 